Patua means to strike, to hit with force. The call has gone out and Patua is the challenge that opens the New Zealand International Festival of the Arts. In the context of this exhibition, Patua is meant as a way of confronting people with an upfront view of how the artists perceive others. The classic Māori designs of swirling kōru and step like potama predominate many of the artworks. A living exhibition of Māori and indigenous contemporary art forms takes over the entire Wellington City Gallery to exhibit works by more than 40 established and emerging Māori artists. Patua the exhibition is a celebration. It identifies contemporary Māori art as it is today. The exhibition in this sense is an awakening with a burgeoning of Māori and indigenous unity. A Māori has an obligation to the art of his people. It is the people's art. The social and cultural leap over the last three decades has been nothing less than profound in Patua. The enthusiasm of the senior artists is acknowledged by their presence and their optimism is as strong and committed as ever. Indeed, the seeds of their philosophy to evolve a new sensibility, reaching out and stretching to new limits, to create a new art so that Māori art is now the art of a living vital culture. It has been eagerly explored and endorsed by successive generations. This exhibition affirms growth, flowering and maturity, and is undermined by the determination of the Māori artists to adhere to the integrity of their own artistic languages. The Patua celebration is a gathering of Māori visual, performing and literacy artists who aim to present an image of Māori culture in a way that would normally happen on a marae. Te Aotinga, the Visual Contemporary Arts Committee, installed the artworks. Te Aotinga and the artists represent the four tides and will welcome other indigenous artists as the festival gets underway. The interaction is part of the ebb and flow of a port and harbour city. The exhibition utilised every available space. A wall had been moved in the gallery to allow light and the people to stream in from outside. The gallery was a very gnaw place. As well as displaying art, the gallery had several Toihokura students and Māori artists working alongside Navajo College artist Melanie Yatsi and a carver and mask maker from Canada, Joe David. Reflecting the voice of this generation of artists who have inherited the seeds, Aotearoa and the South Pacific is where the art is. This being so, it hovers well that the flagship gallery of the city keeps pace with the tidal flow and the waka of contemporary art has surely landed. Our roots are firmly here and as Sandy Adset, the exhibition's curator, affirms, this is a great time to get together, enjoy each other's company and to have the opportunity to meet and welcome visiting artists and people from other cultures. The interaction of our art forms and celebration is a particular cultural value that we share amongst tribal groups. The coming of the demon yash, the little moon, the coming of the coming out of his cave, the swim to the surface, Ricky up there, up there, up there, Ricky up there, the coming of the look around, the coming of would shake his head. Let me hear him see the coming for shaking his head. Let me hear him see the coming for shaking his head. And let's feel how sharp those claws are. Hold your claws wide up in the air. Let's scratch the air with those claws. Hold those claws up. The Tanifa would open his mouth wide. Let me see your Tanifa teeth, everyone. The Tanifa would let us know me. Tanifa, roar at the air, put it out. That was a squeak. Out of all the living people on the earth, not gods, people like us, who did the first hugger? Oh, Martin Jackson. 
The porphyry is a special occasion. Guests are tapu until they have been welcomed and fed. Very important people and Māori groups coming into Patua are treated as though visiting a marae. The general public come and go as they would in any other exhibition. The gallery was the heart of the festival, the marae, the place that keeps us warm.
South Africa, Russia, Germany, Spain, Italy, Belgium. God, I've probably forgotten some. But welcome to all our international visitors. Welcome on behalf of the festival. So this is the heart of our festival. This place, this marae, is the heart that keeps the festival warm. It's part of a season in the festival called Tsoka Atoi. Tsoka Atoi is the Māori season within the festival, and this is our heart. This is the place that keeps us all warm for the full, for the three weeks, the 24 days of the festival. It's really important to us all and, and to our mana, as Sandy said, to welcome you here. Normally a woman doesn't speak on a marae, but because it's a party I have, Sandy said that I could speak. <laughs> so as you came in the front door, you will have seen a structure painted, erected over the front door, and that indicates the front of a meeting house, a traditional meeting house. So on that basis, we have turned this place into one of our traditional homes. <laughs> The traditional welcome is that we share a space of air together. In other words, we could, you will come around and press noses with us, and that is the final uh, form of the traditional welcome. Te Toka Apoi will be showing programs right throughout the whole spectrum of Māoridom. And these lunchtime concerts this week and today feature some of the young people in Māoridom today. The group in front of me are from the Hutt Valley, Nine Eye College to be precise. So ladies and gentlemen, tutored by Nairi Pohatu, could you please say kia ora and give a big welcome to Nine Eye College.
Always to do Morocco, which is the work with the weapon. That is a weapon, it is not a spear, children. That is a club. It is used for striking, for poking, for whacking, but not for throwing. It is not a spear, it is a long club. There are many long clubs. This one is the favorite one and has a whole tradition of school and learning with it. Before they can do any of this, there's a whole lot of exercises which they must do to loosen the body up or to strengthen the body in order to do these exercises. Just like any sport that you do, you have a warm-up and so on. It is so important to warm your body up, otherwise your feet are slow, your elbows are cold, and you are unable to strike and defend yourself in the proper way. Try holding a rako and pushing your body up off the ground. If you think that was hard, then try this one. Make sure you're on bricks. These exercises they're doing now are called tayaha. They are solely for the arm teach the arms to move the rako in a precise manner. The legs just follow. These are simply arm exercises, getting the arm used to the weapon. Concerned people, we're concerned for our own culture, 
because we see the arts as being like some of the endangered birds in our environment. However, with your help and with your guidance, we ought to be able to keep Māori art alive. We ought to be able to develop it. We ought to be able to have something valuable, something precious to hand on to the generations yet to come. I know it has superb people. 